For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch and our May Day special series of interviews where we talk to representatives of trade unions from across the world. This May Day is especially significant as the workers and trade unions across the world are facing a series of heightened challenges. So how are these organizations planning to confront them? What are the modes of organizing that they're thinking of? Today, we are joined by Edgar Rissere of the United Food and Allied Workers Union of Zimbabwe. Thank you so much, Edgar, for joining us. And could you first start out by talking about what is the situation of workers under COVID-19 in the country, especially workers of your sector, the food and allied workers, who are considered an essential service. These workers have to go out during the time of the pandemic. So do they have enough protective equipment? Do they have enough other, other amenities that are being provided by the government and their employers? Yeah, we have a, the greatest challenge is the provision of personal protective equipment in those sectors that have been declared by this government to be essential sectors that are operating within, within this lockdown, which fall within our sector, the food industry. The survey that we have recently carried out as a trade union has shown that there is no compliance with the provision of protective, uh, personal protective uh, equipment, especially masks, the sanitizers, and, the, and, and so forth. It's not there. Right. That's the first challenge. Right. Then we have the other challenge of the suspension of the rights of the workers, uh, to the extent that the working hours, which have been, uh, which were recently pegged in terms of legislation, at nine hours on average, the workers are now working six to six long hours uh, in an effort to, to cover up for the challenges arising as a result of the of, of the pandemic. We also have the other challenge, which is the the, the psychosocial fear in the workers. Which, which, which we are getting, where the workers in, they have an apprehension as to what will become of them after uh, or if the lockdown is to continue. And the, as a result of this pandemic, what will become of their jobs? Are they going to be safe? Are they going to be laid off? Those fears uh, and the fear of uh, how this, they are going to support their families is the greatest fear. The other challenge is that the, the, the legislation has sort of been suspended in that uh, the employers, they are forcing the workers to take their leave days. These days are a value, they are money. And uh, they are just being forced to take their leave days as compensation for the loss that the employer is making during the lockdown period. The other challenge is that uh, uh, the, the, the working hours, they have been shifted. Instead of working for nine hours a day, the workers are now having to work for six hours for, from 6 to 6, which is 12 hours, in a bid to contain the, 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 the social distance. What has happened is the numbers have reduced in the plants, and by reducing the numbers in the plants, the work cycle has been changed to accommodate social distancing, and by trying to accommodate social distancing, they have, uh, they have actually increased the number of working hours to 12 hours instead of 9 hours, and the number of shifts have also been increased. Those are the, the, the greatest challenges that we are facing. Right. Has the government taken any step at all to ensure that the workers' rights are being protected or that they are not being exploited? Because we are getting reports of uh, employers actually exploiting the workers. You mentioned, of course, the extension in time. So, what steps are being taken by the government, if at all? Any? Currently, the, in Zimbabwe, there, is no, there are no measures that have been taken to protect the workers. Instead, we as trade unions, especially of housing, has been on the ground trying to ascertain the situation. This is where we are seeing the violation, the fundamental violation of these rights mm -hmm. by the employers taking advantage of this situation. Right. We are planning that if it is extended, we will then approach the government to say, where are the inspectors to inspect whatever is going on in industry because the workers themselves are under threat from both the disease and uh, the, 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 the violation of their own rights during the COVID-19 period. Absolutely. And the other key question, of course, is that Zimbabwe over the past year especially has seen a number of protests. There was the strike by the doctors towards the end of last year, which went on for quite some time. And even before that, after the elections, there were a series of protests. So in this political context, how is the government, uh, what is the credibility of the government? Is it able to implement measures to tackle the disease properly? We did hear that there was a lot of suspicion about the government's testing efforts because they were not enough. On the ground, practically, you may want to believe that there is a lockdown in theory, but practically what is happening on the ground is it seems to be taking a political twist where other political, a certain political party is now taking the COVID-19 as a, 
in the campaign platform right. uh, where the, the, the issue of locking distance people are having together and uh, receive donations and so forth. That's the greatest challenge that we are seeing. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, the other key question in many countries is that how does the labor movement actually organize at a time like this? So the possibilities of strikes, the possibilities of rallies are not no long, are no longer there right now. And even in the coming months, it might be difficult to actually bring people in large numbers. And this is not even counting government suppression. So how is the union engaging with its members right now? What is the kind of communication that's going on? What are the strategies that are being used? Currently, as we were discussing recently on how to mitigate this in terms of organizing, they, we have uh, devised the uh, individual visits to companies to get information on what exactly is going on the ground. Uh, small groups, uh, we meet small groups of workers, four or five uh, in a day, and uh, talk to them. We have also created WhatsApp platforms so that uh, we are alerted to, to whatever is going on in the plant if we are not able to get there because the uh, mass gatherings are no longer wanted. Uh, and in some companies, we are not allowed to get in simply because they are saying keep out because of this coronavirus while they violate the rights of the workers inside the plant. So that's why we use this, uh, this WhatsApp platform to say WhatsApp us so that uh, we get to know whatever is going, in, going on inside there. Right. And what are the key demands that the union is putting forward to the government right now? The, 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 the greatest demand that we are putting forward is that there has to be a mitigation of the loss of jobs in the event of any in the form of a social cushion so that if those workers are to be laid off as a labor response to the to, to, to the COVID-19 the government should then be in a position to provide a social fund for those people to begin a new life after the layoff right and uh, what about regarding in the next coming months because also there is a question of governmental support in terms of food in terms of other resources as well in the in the coming months we are actually planning and we can foresee this going up to as far as september however uh, in terms of our, our our demand we are saying the government must come out clear as to its position with regard to the workers because currently here in Zimbabwe, it's only the government is only meeting business to say how do we move forward without involving labor Right. And so we are demanding that even if it is to meet business, labor has to be involved to some extent. And we have to, we are demanding that what is the current position? Can you come out clean in terms of uh, uh, the money that you are saying you are going to give to industry, uh, uh, that those that have been affected? How about the worker? How are they going also to sustain this worker, given that there is threat of cutting of wages? How then are they going to meet get this cut of wage by the by the by the by the employer? Absolutely. The, we, the right. workers in the food industry, will sustain this country. We, the workers in the food industry, will continue, will continue to fight the system uh, until the workers are liberated. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. You're welcome, my dear. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,